All right, everybody, welcome to our video on bifascicular blocks. And so this is an interesting concept. And I just want to start off with a quick um, overview on the fascicles that are we're going to be talking about. So the fascicles, this is the a fascicle is just referring to um, a pathway of cells that um, are organized and allow for the conduction of um, signal through the ventricles. And so we have three total fascicles. These are all going to be familiar to you. We have the right bundle branch. We've got the right bundle branch. We've got the, on the left side, the left anterior fascicle. And we've also got the left posterior fascicle. And so if you want a little bit more review on fascicular blocks, on monofascicular blocks, like a left anterior fascicular or left posterior fascicular blocks, go to those previous videos in this playlist. But today, when we talk about bifascicular blocks, classically, that means that it's a bifascicular block is a right bundle branch block plus either a left anterior fascicular block or a left posterior fascicular block. So it's either one of those left-sided fascicles. So there's three total fascicles, the right bundle branch, if you look on this coronal view that we have here, we've got our right bundle branch through here. That's one fascicle. Then you're going to have your left anterior fascicle, which is off the left bundle branch. So that wraps around the upper lateral wall. On the, and these are all on the endocardial surface. So that's the left anterior fascicle. And then you've got on the kind of uh, infraceptal wall posteriorly in the endocardial surface, you've got your left posterior fascicle. And so remember, the bifascicular blocks is going to be a block of the right bundle branch plus one of the left sided um, fascicular blocks. So this is all going to be QRS related because this is all ventricular depolarization. And so let's talk about first what we would expect to see. And I'm gonna kind of go over these a little bit more quickly. If you wanna look at specifically the anterior or posterior fascicular blocks, I think those are better videos to start off with. Today we're gonna to look at what the EKG is gonna look like when you have a combined right bundle branch plus one of the fascicular blocks. So the most common type, the first type of bifascicular block is a right bundle branch block plus a left anterior fascicular block. So that is the first type. That's the most common type because the left anterior fascicle is supplied by the left anterior descending artery. And so if there's any disease, ischemic heart disease, to so just that uh, one vessel you can have damage to the left anterior fascicle. And so on EKG, you're going to see features of a right bundle branch block, which we know is an RSR prime in V1. And then you will also see features of the left anterior fascicular block which if you've watched our other videos is going to be manifested as a small Q, big R wave in the lateral leads, which is lead one in AVL. So that'll look like little Q, big R, and then in the inferior leads, we will have a little r, 
big S in two, three, AVF, which will look something like little r, big S. So what we'll see in the left anterior fascicular block is we're going to have our right bundle branch block, which we know that means that the QRS is greater than 120 milliseconds in duration because we're going to meet all the criteria for right bundle branch block. And then we're going to have this left axis deviation that is created by the left anterior fascicular block pattern, which is going to cause our left axis which is not common in a right bundle branch block. So this first type of bifascicular bi block, right bundle branch block pattern, which we see the RS bar prime in V1 and the left axis deviation, which is created by our left anterior fascicular block pattern. So let's take a look at what an EKG might look like. In this case, We've got a widened QRS. We see our QRS duration. We look maybe here in V5, greater than 120 milliseconds. So it's wide. So I look for a cause of a wide QRS, which typically is a, if, if this is a sinus rhythm, which it is, it's coming from a bundle branch block. And I look over here at V1, and I see we've got this RSR prime, RSR prime. In the setting of a wide QRS, this is a criteria for right bundle branch block. If you're not great at right bundle branch blocks, check that video out too that I posted. You see slurring S waves in the lateral leads, which is consistent with right bundle branch blocks. So we've got our right bundle branch block here, but I look at my QRS axis and I see I've got upright QRS in lead one and a negative QRS in AVF, which means that we are going up into the left for our QRS. And so the QRS is left axis deviation, which is not common for a right bundle branch block. And you can see here in lead one, I've got my pattern of QR. And in my inferior leads, I've got my RS pattern, RS. And so that is our manifestation of the left anterior fascicular block pattern. So this is a good example of a right bundle branch block with a left anterior fascicular block, aka one type of bifascicular block. So if you're going to call this a bifascicular block, go ahead and make sure you also annotate which of the two of the three fascicles are blocked. And so if I return back, and we talk about the other type of bifascicular block. Our other type is going to be a right bundle branch block plus a left posterior fascicular block. And so same thing, our right bundle branch block, we're going to have a QRS greater than 120 milliseconds. We'll have an RSR prime in V1. And we'll also have features of our left posterior fascicle being blocked. I've got a video on the posterior fascicular blocks if you need, but left posterior fascicular blocks manifest as a little r in a big S wave in our lateral leads, in the high lateral leads of 1 and AVL, and it manifests as a little q big R wave 
in the inferior leads, which are 2, 3, and A, V, F. And this is showing evidence of when that left posterior fascicle is not working, we're getting late and high amounts of forces that are going inferior towards that posterior fascicle. So if you don't understand that, go watch the video where I just dive into the mechanism behind our fascicular blocks. And this will make it much easier to determine, okay, what is the physiology behind a, a fascicular block? And then if I add a right plantar branch block to it. So this type of bifascicular block is the right bundle branch plus left posterior. Notice that when you have left posterior fascicular block, this creates right axis deviation. And in our previous videos, we need to make sure that this is not explained by something like RVH. So anytime you have axis deviation and you want to diagnose a fascicular block, or a bifascicular block, you need to make sure it's not explained by any other EKG abnormality. So let's check out what this is going to look like. So we've got, we're going to be evaluating our QRSs. And I see it's a widened QRS. If I look, say, down here at this QRS, QRS is greater than 120 milliseconds, so it's wide. So it makes me think, okay, I wonder if there's a bundle branch block because the conduction system is taking a long time with there's just that wide QRS. And if I look in V1 to see, I wonder if there's a right bundle branch block, you can see I've got the R, S, R prime morphology, R, S, R prime morphology. And in the setting of a wide QRS, that's diagnostic for a right bundle branch block. Obviously, we make sure that this is sinus rhythm which we see that we've got these nice P waves that are upright in one and AVS. It's not sinus rhythm. This person incidentally has a first degree AV block. If you haven't noticed, they've also got a first degree AV block, which is just fun to notice. So then it's a right bundle branch block, but I take a look at my QRS axis and I see in lead one, my QRS is negative. And in AVF, my QRS is more positive. So that means that it's going, our QRS is going down and to the right. So my QRS axis is right axis deviated. And I look at the pattern and in lead one, I've got little r, big S. And in the inferior leads, I've got a little q, big R. And so in the setting of a right bundle branch block, we see that we also have criteria for a left posterior fascicular block. And so now we can say that this is a bifascicular pattern of block. Why is the right bundle branch block plus the left posterior fascicular block more rare? Well, that's because the left posterior fascicle actually has dual blood supply to the left posterior fascicle. It gets actually its blood supply from the right and left circumflex. So if, if you if you have disease in the right circumflex, the left can still have good collateral flow and vice versa. So we don't see this very often. And if you do see it, it might be evidence of more extensive you know, structural heart disease or ischemic uh, heart disease. So diagnosing these on EKG, if they're new onset, you know, think about what could cause damage to the conducting system and the ventricles. And, um, and there might be something that you see chronically after somebody has some chronic damage. So I hope these videos helps you identify bifascicular blocks. Remember, bifascicular blocks are right bundle branch blocks plus either a left anterior or posterior fascicular blocks. So you'll see right anytime you see a right bundle branch block morphology, assess for any of the fascicular blocks. So I hope this helps. Have a great day.